When the first four of the seven seals have been broken, four riders shall be summoned. Conquest War Famine And Death With them these riders shall bring the apocalypse. You've probably heard of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse before, whether it was through the original biblical stories or some kind of modern reference. When it comes to the end of days, you can't go far without bumping into the Four Horsemen. So who are these mysterious figures, and what exactly is their story? Today's video has been made possible by the awesome people over at Wicked Clothes. If you're tired of wearing plain, boring t-shirts, Wicked Clothes designs clothing inspired by folklore, mythology, and all things supernatural or paranormal. You can grab t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, or even hats, all with unique designs tailored for those who enjoy the stranger things in life. Some of my favourite designs include the Medusa Let's Get Stoned t-shirt, the Mothman for all the cryptid fans out there, and you can't really go wrong with a Cthulhu in Space t-shirt. Pretty much all the shirts are unisex, so anyone can wear them, and if you use the link wickedclothes.com slash myth, you'll get 10% off your order. So go and check them out as it really helps support the channel. The idea of the Four Horsemen originates from Christian myth. They appear in three main books. In the Old Testament, the riders can be found in the Book of Zechariah or the Book of Ezekiel. In the New Testament, John of Patmos talks about them in the Book of Revelation. Chapter 6 of Revelation talks about a scroll in the right hand of God, which has been sealed shut by seven individual seals. When the Lamb of God opens the first four of these seven seals, he shall summon forth four beings that ride on white, red, black, and pale horses. Out of these four riders, only death is named in the Bible. The rest are named after what they represent. The Lamb of God, for those unfamiliar, is a title given to Jesus Christ. Which leads us to believe if Jesus is opening these seals and unleashing the apocalypse upon humanity, then maybe it was ordained by God himself. Maybe it is a future or punishment that humanity brought upon itself. The first horseman to appear is the Rider in White, the Horseman of Conquest. Then I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying as with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked, and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. This horseman has been interpreted in several different ways. In this context, conquering meant spreading the word of God across the land. The reason this rider is dressed in white would have been because traditionally it's a colour the Bible associates with purity, Christ, and righteousness. In the mid-19th century, there were those who claimed this horseman represented something closer to the Antichrist and was not to be seen as a positive figure. The White Horseman was also thought to symbolise war, which would make sense considering war and conquest often go hand in hand, but war is something more commonly associated with the Red Horseman. You may also see that many refer to the First Horseman as pestilence instead of conquest, and there are a few reasons for this. War and conquest are fairly similar. And so in the last few hundred years, writers and scholars have instead associated the first horseman with infectious disease, the bringer of plague. The Romans interpreted all four horsemen slightly differently. They saw them as representing or prophesizing the future of the Roman Empire. The color white to them was symbolic of triumph, political success, and prosperity. Although the White Horseman may not have been seen as Christ or religion, they also saw him largely as a positive figure. 
The second horseman is the rider in red, the horseman of war. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse went out, and to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from earth, and that men would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. Everything about the second horseman is fairly straightforward. He rides on a fiery red horse, with his great sword held upwards as a declaration of war. An upwards facing sword would often signify the intention to enter battle, and the colour red we can assume symbolises the bloodshed that comes with war. The white and red horsemen were both connected to war, but not the same type of war. Conquest implies trying to seize control of something through military force. In the case of the Horsemen of Conquest, that would mean spreading the word of God to those who may be of a different faith. It was granted to take peace from earth, and that men would slay one another. It's this passage that led scholars to interpret the Horsemen of War as representing civil war. If we go back to the Roman Empire, the White Horseman was symbolic of the success of Rome, the Red Horseman, not so much. The second seal being broken meant that peace left Rome. There was bloodshed, civil war and insurrection in the Empire. This is attributed to the Roman Emperor Commodus, whose reign is considered the end of the Golden Era within Rome, and the beginning of civil unrest. The third horseman is the Black Rider, the Horseman of Famine. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come. I looked, and behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard something like a voice in the centre of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius but do not damage the oil and wine. Some believe the scales the horseman holds can be interpreted as the scales of justice. Others believe the scales actually reflect how bread used to be weighed in times of famine. The mention of barley and wheat in the above passage is why the latter interpretation is used more commonly. The prices mentioned may not make much sense now, but it roughly translates to an entire day's work just to buy some of the ingredients needed to make bread. So you can see how that may have caused a famine. It also mentions the price of oil and wine remains untouched, but these were luxuries way out of the price range of a common worker. This can also be taken in a literal sense, as a plague of locusts could easily ravage crops, but grapevines and olive branches are a bit more resolute. If the horseman is bringing this famine as a punishment, then going after necessities such as wheat and barley, which offer little resistance but are of great importance, does make sense. If we once again go back to the Roman Empire, the third horseman and the increasing costs of basic necessities would represent the excessive taxation of Roman citizens that led to the rich continuing their lavish lifestyles whilst everyone else struggled just to feed their families. The fourth and final horseman is the Pale Rider. Many scholars describe a sickly appearance, as opposed to a specific colour like the other horsemen. In later artistic interpretations, the colour green is what we would associate with the Horseman of Death. When the Lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come. I looked, and behold a pale horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, and with famine, and with pestilence, and by the wild beasts of the earth. The fourth horseman is the only one to be mentioned by name. He's also referred to as Thanatos, a Greek deity or spirit associated with non-violent death. Death is also described as being followed by Hades, 
which in this sense may not necessarily mean the god himself, but more so Hades the rest in place of the dead. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, and with famine, and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. This can be interpreted as death being given authority to kill, and Hades to take the souls, but the fact it mentions by sword, famine and pestilence, you would imagine this passage refers to all four horsemen. After years of carnage, famine, oppression and failures by the Empire to look after its own people, death would mark the dissolution of the Roman Empire. The four horsemen have been interpreted in many different ways, one being as a prophecy of the Great Tribulation, a series of judgments from God that caused many on earth to die. Those who repented for their sins and accepted him as their saviour would form a new world of those who remained faithful. The horsemen were the first of many judgments, the first seal being broken signifying the arrival of the Antichrist, the second was global war, the third economic collapse, and the last was the death of a quarter of the world's population. The Book of Zechariah takes a different approach to the four horsemen. Here they are known as four spirits who descend from heaven on chariots, each one with a different coloured horse. Unlike in Revelation, their role is not to bring the apocalypse. They were sent to patrol the earth and maintain peace so the account in Zechariah is pretty much the opposite to Revelation. Hopefully this sheds some light on the Four Horsemen. If you'd like to share your favourite references of the Four Horsemen, then feel free to do so in the comments section. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.